Hello there, I'm Black Bright, broadcasting out of the UK, right into your rooms all over the globe. And welcome to my channel, and if you've already subscribed, thank you. Thank you for your support, and for if you like this channel, um, and you haven't liked it yet, put the click on the thumbs up and share it with your friends and family, and also subscribe um, by clicking on the little bell also gives you an option to personalize I'm not quite sure what that means but you can click one or the other anyway um, today I well yesterday I received a email from a lady who is really concerned about women who have had their pension stopped um, I was trying to imagine being in that situation where you're born in the 1950s you um, are expecting to retire in, say, a couple of years' time, only to be told that it's been extended to 65 or 66, depending on what year you're born. You know, because when you think about it, retirement is like you just think about, OK, I can stop working. You're planning for all of that. You're planning when you get your lump sum to pay off your mortgage, to pay off your little debt so you can have... You can live comfortably. I mean, I didn't even know you could get a percentage of a lump sum of the whole um, amount of your state pension. I didn't even know that. Otherwise, I wouldn't have sold my house. But apparently, you can actually get a percentage of the whole amount of your state pension. I think it's up to 133,000, 136,000. It used to be more than that. But yeah, anyway... What's happening now is that when you think about that, the reality, I mean, a lot of people are saying, oh, what difference does it make? But the thing is, once you reach 60, not only have you kind of mentally wound down, but you're going to find it very difficult to get a job. And yes, some people look 60, some people don't. But the fact of the matter is, is that even though you might look younger or you might be living longer, your body is still deteriorating at the same rate. So just because, and the thing is, how do they expect, you know, especially some men in certain jobs, how do they expect them to continue working? And likewise with women, you have some nurses, you know, they're expected to be on their feet all day, walking around the wards. What about people who look up, you know, look after children or vulnerable adults? They're expected to keep working. And their body is telling its own story. It's starting to ache. It's starting to pain. You're starting to, you know, you, yes, you can work. Yes, you can get up and go. But your body is talking to you and telling you to slow down. So you've got that. And then you've got your pensions stopped or deferred. And goodness knows how long for people who are in their 30s and 40s probably won't see their, who are in their 30s and 40s now, probably have to retire at 70. And I can understand the concept of old age has changed. Old age pensioners, when you look at them in those 1950s movies, they're really old, fat with little aprons on, you know, little round glasses, hair nets, you know, walking sticks. That was an old age pensioner, you know, hopping up the road on a Zimmer frame. That was an old age pensioner. And yes, old age pensioners have changed. And I think they've even changed the name from old age pensioners. I don't know what they call them now, mature adults or something. Oh, everything. They're always changing these names to be more polite. But whatever it is, a rose is a rose by whatever name is still a rose, Shakespeare. No, but the point is, is that regardless, it's very, very difficult when you're psychologically winding down, expecting that you're going to be able to pay off for certain things and then it's extended. A lot of people, because they haven't, they're not getting no income because they haven't got a job, they're having to sell their homes. Some of them have been forced into homelessness. Some of them have been forced to food banks. It's not right. And, you know, the government, you know, what, what pees us off, I think what pees the majority of us off is that those people who make those rules are not suffering by them. Those people have private pensions. Those people are well off. They don't go through what we go through. They're not counting pennies. They're not working out 
where, how, whether or not they're going to have enough and how much they're going to be able to spend a week and wondering when they can afford to retire. They've got stacks of money. They don't have to think about that. And yes, you can. they can say, oh, well, we don't have to worry about you. Some, pe some of those rich people think it's our fault we're in poverty. Some people think that we're lazy because we're in this position. They have all kinds of reasons to justify making us worse off. And they do say the poor get poorer and the rich get poorer, rich get richer. And it's prophecy fulfilling. Because they're pulling the wool, the, sorry, they're pulling the carpet from under our feet at every angle. And this is just another way of forcing people into poverty. And they're talking about you can get loans and all this kind of stuff. Who wants to loan against your retirement? You want to have a choice. You know what I mean? The, you Being unfortunate in being born in the wrong year, say 1955 or 1956 or 1957 instead of 1952 makes all the difference to whether or not you got your pension or whether or not it's going to be deferred for a few years. Then they've got the audacity to say, oh, well, it's gender equality. These people are dread. Ah. <laughs> oh. You know, it's a patriarchal society. So they're just having a dig at women. Women who wanted equality. Women who wanted to go out on their own. Women who are independent. So we'll show you who's independent. We'll show you what independent looks like. We'll show you what equality looks like. You're going to be paid at the same age as men. And that's probably what it's all about. You know, they're talking about gender equality. They've always got a reason to justify what they do and make it look like it's our fault because we've been advocating for one thing. God forbid if you advocate for the wrong thing. If you advocate for something, mate, you better be prepared for the consequences because the consequences are long lasting. I mean, there has been a lot of advantages in um, female equality, getting, you know, not having to run to your husband and ask him to pay everything. You know, you've got your own salary, that kind of stuff. There are advantages, but the majority of advantages. So, but when you get penalised with this, it's a kick in the teeth. Anyway, um, I took some information out of money. This is money, but this was quite old. Um, it's called the Great Pension Robbery. Um, so, millions of people born in the latter part of the 1950s have seen their retirement income slashed. By one by one billion government raid on Britain's pensions. This was nineteen ninety nine, actually. Bloody hell! But I think what I've done is I think I've combined different um, sources. I tend to do that. I tend to try and put them in some semblance of order. So it's not all going to be. It's not going to be chronological correct, but it, put it that way, chronologically correct. OK, approximately 3.8 million women born in the 1950s have had their pensions dated. Pension dates changed by adding on six years with insufficient notice. No formal letter and no time to which to make other arrangements. The thing is, the governments are saying that, you know, they've been talking about... Um, equalising the pension since 1995. But what they're saying is, is that they didn't kind of forewarn about how the acceleration of the timetable. So what's happened is, yeah, people heard it rumoured, but all of a sudden it was then put in force and people weren't expecting it. I think that's what basically happened. Um, people get excited about retirement. They think about paying their mortgage, planning holidays, spending time with their grandchildren. And that delay means they still have to work. Some cannot find work and therefore end up in poverty. Uh, since April the 6th, 2010, the state pension age has been gradually increases from 60 to 65. It will rise to 66 for women and men by October 2020 next year. And recipients wother, worry whether it will increase even further. Currently, the state pension age 65 as of November 2018 to match men. And they have blamed 
it's been blamed on women's rights for equality. It rises to 66 for both sexes in October 2020 and a planned further increase to 67 starting from 2026. 26 years away. Hmm. Another rise to 68 from 2039 was recommended by the official Cridlin Review in 2018, which will hit workers currently in their late 30s and early 40s who may well be looking to retire at 70 years old. <sighs> Raising the state pension age unexpectedly has hit women especially hard, according to the campaign group WASPI which stands for Women Against State Pension Inequality, with about 3.8 million women born in the 1950s forced to wait up to an extra six years, I said that. In protests outside Parliament last month, Waspie said a lack of sufficient information about the rise meant many women did not find out about it until they reached 60, leaving them with no time to make alternative plans. How did that happen? They got to 60. And then they found out. So I wonder if they heard the rumours, but they didn't realise it had been put in force. But really and truly, they should have really um, written to people and told them. That must be awful to think that you're going to retire and then you find out that you can't. Hmm. I don't think I could retire. I find it too bloody boring. But I mean, at least, you know, you want to have a choice. OK, the former pensions minister, Ross Altman, said the government increased the state pension age for older women up by up to 18 months with five years notice, while men had seven years notice of a 12 month change. The short notice changes have caused significant hardship to many women, especially as many did not know about the original plans to increase their pension age from 60. I don't understand why they're saying, on the one hand, they have five years notice, and then they're saying they they didn't know about the increase from the age of 60. So if anybody has, you know, can enlighten me on that, why in some places they're talking about, you know, they've been notified since 1995, they've been talking about the increases, and um, Ross Altman, who's the former pensions minister, is saying, they had five years notice and then they go on to say women did not know about the original plans to increase their pension age to 60 so any light you can shed on that would be useful lower wages for women and broken employment periods because of possible pregnancies could result in women falling failing to build a full national insurance record mean they receive lower state pensions than men in november 2017 the average weekly amount of state pension received by women was 126 pounds 45 per week while men received 153 pounds 99 and I guess that is a point because you have to accumulate so many years in order to get the full pension. And if you've had time off to have kids and, um, you know, historically women have had lower wages, they are going to get less. Uh, women in their 60s also have a fraction of the pension savings that men have. I don't know how that's worked out. According to a report by the Chartered Insurance Institute last week, the average 65-year-old woman has 35,000 800 in her pension compared with 179,000 for the average 65 year old man. So at least we know where the men's money is going. The women are there spending it on the house and the home and on the kids, and the men's pocketing it, <laughs> sticking it in his bloody bank account or in his pension. Oh boy. A spokeswoman for Waspy said clearly, equalisation is not simply just about the age you reach for retirement but also about your ability to accrue a full state pension entitlement and generate a private pension to have any hope of security in retirement. There was some publicity about equalising pensions around 1995, but time flies and notice how the timetable was to be accelerated in the 2011 Pensions Act was inadequate. 
and notice of how the timetable was to be accelerated and the 2011 Pension Act was inadequate. As a result, notice of deferred pension seemed abrupt and difficult to accept. Gender equality is used as an excuse. The patriarchal aspect of society have always had it in for women who advocated for equal rights. I understand that we're all living considerably longer than when pensions were first introduced, but it is hard for women in women born in the 1950s to adjust to another 10 years work when they've thought that they could retire in three years time. Um, that was my little footnote in there because I was thinking, you know, when you will reach about these people say would reach about 57 and they start planning their retirement for 60 and then only to find that, you know, once they reach 60, they've still got another six years, which is an extra nine years, you know, psychologically added on to their figures and their plans. Back to 60 WASPy pension reformers unite on Facebook, share stories of women made homeless using food banks, etc as a result of the deferred pension because they have been unable to secure jobs for the remaining six years. And that's the problem. You know, you have people kind of looking for young people. It used to be um, 18 to 35. And even now, people in their 50s, 60s are being written off when it comes to jobs. Unless you don't look like your age, you go into an agency and the agency bung you into a job. And then they happen to see how well you work and then you get a job. Then maybe at your age in your 60s or your 70s, if you look good and you carry yourself well, you could get a job. But if you're looking like somebody old and frail, they don't want you. And you're not going to get a job. Actuary Bacon and Woodrow is one firm representing some of the largest pension schemes associates Michael Robart says the Indian revenue has been hostile and uncommunicative. It has changed rules retrospectively and it is pensioners who will have to pay. This is as bad as Robert Maxwell's raid on the Mirror's pension pot in the sum of 900 million. Yeah, Robert Maxwell robbing the pension pot um, for the Mirror. They all got their money back though. Um, yeah. Our pensions seem to be an irresistible source of revenue for politicians and our future looks ominous. At present, a lump sum of up to 25% of the total pot can be taken tax-free in one go, since we can only now accumulate a maximum of 1.2 million free of tax. This means the highest lump sum available would be 312,500. It is rumoured that the government is looking at a possible cap of 36,000. Can you imagine from a cap from 312,500 to 36,000? They're having a laugh, which would yield an extra 2 billion a year in tax and may even move against a tax-free sum altogether. I'll tell you something, they're just wanting to hold on to our money. That's what they're doing. Probably want to, they probably um, got it invested in something. So they're like, oh, we can't give it up yet. So let's defer it. Who knows? Who knows? Just a thought. And that's all for now. So I hope, KC, um, this video does it justice, it does you justice, and does the topic justice. So big up all the 60 year olds. Bye bye for now.